And welcome back to Let's Play River City Girls 2, where we're not playing as a girl, we're playing as the main man himself, Kunio, of the Kunio Kone series, which this game is a part of. What a novel concept, playing as the, uh, standard main character. Now one thing I want to comment on before we get down to the nitty gritty of today, you may notice that the overworld looks a little different. River City Girls 2 has a day-night system. How does this impact gameplay? Well, it really, it really doesn't. Uh, the way uh, it switches between day and night is you may notice that there is a clock in the top right on your phone screen that is not tied to your system clock or anything. That is actually an in-world game clock that keeps advancing, and uh, when it passes certain times, it'll switch between night and day. Uh, like I said, night and day does not affect too, too much. Uh, there is one accessory that grants you stat buffs when it is nighttime, and then there is one side quest where only certain uh, steps of it can be completed depending on the time of day. One aspect of it can only be completed at night, and another can only be completed during the day. And that often confuses people, as the day-night cycle does not really factor into much else in this game. In fact, it doesn't really factor into anything. Now, moving on from that, we got a side quest from our old pal Gold Godai, which requires us to go here. Uh, now that we have uh, completed all our business in Gro Crosstown, the bridge area has expanded, allowing us to get to downtown, and we can also access this little park area, and Godai is standing off to the side on that dock there. Now, how does playing as Kunio uh, affect the story? Well, let's walk forward and find out. Oh, hey! It's you two. Please, don't tell me that's... Yep. It's Godai. Uh, the one and only. Except no substitutions. I'd accept a refund. By the way, I saw you two take out that Yakuza crew at the bank. Very impressive. How'd you see that? Oh, well, uh, you know, I like to keep my eyes around town. <laughs> Speaking of, you two sure are dressed sharp today. I don't like where this is going. I got a proposition for you. Does it involve my foot in your neck? <laughs> uh, maybe later. Anyway, I'm working on a secret photography project. How's about you two take selfies of yourselves around town? Why? Why not? Should be what you're asking. Why, you creepy little skunk? F for my project. Anyway, I'll give you a big prize. Snap photos of yourselves around town and you'll earn something real special. I don't trust him. Neither do I, but we could use some extra cash. Okay, doormat. How do we take these selfies? With the cameras on your cell phones, of course. Why do we keep agreeing to stuff like this? Well, this side quest picked up a whole heaping helping of homoerotic subtext by playing as Kuneo, but uh, basically the way the story works in this game is that there is a script for Misako and there is a script for Kyoko. Naturally, Misako will always have Misako's script if she is one of your playable characters, and Kyoko will always have her script. And inside the settings of the game, you can change who your partner voice is in single player. So you can uh, create your own pairings of characters who will read out the dialogue in the game, and depending Depending on what combination of characters you are will depend on what script they get. Kunio's kind of interesting in that half the time he'll have Misako's script if he's uh, paired with a who is considered to be a ditzier character in line with Kyoko, and uh, Ricky uh, will more often have Kyoko's script, but sometimes it can change around, like say Ricky was paired up with Kyoko, then Ricky would have Misako's script instead. And like I said, you can switch the partner voices, get the different combinations, see who gets what script. This does result in uh, Kunio being pretty inconsistently characterized, but uh, there's also some entertainment to be had out of that because a lot of this dialogue, although it does get slight modifications if different characters are reading it, uh, most of it is uh, pretty explicitly written to be from uh, the point of views of Misako and Kyoko, so it is uh, rather amusing to have this dialogue uh, by two relatively ditzy high school girls being read by uh, these meatheads like Kunio and Ricky. With that all said and done, we are more or less done with our business. If we followed that bridge, we could get to downtown, but I want to go to uptown instead. Uh, like uh, I did with uh, the backtracking in the previous video, I bought a whole bunch of stuff off screen, uh, most of the stat boosting foods for Kunio, and also bought him some new moves. When we actually get forced into combat, I will show that off. We've got some side stuff to check out. There is an accessory shop here in this part of the mall that I don't care about, but uh, one thing to check out over here, if I can get here without dying, oh geez is this elevator has the first photo opportunity point for uh, Godai's selfie side quest. If I can actually jump on it. Okay, there we go. Uh, it would have been nice if I was actually standing on the elevator, but Kunio took a mid-air picture. Look, we got wings. 
So each area in the game, save for the final area, has a place where you can take a selfie, and that is this is a game long collection side quest. It isn't just Sabu statues in this game that we have to collect. There are a handful of game long collection side quests, much like Godai's selfie quest. And of course, I don't have the agility to make that jump, so I just fall to my death. That is okay though. Now the perspective there was making it a little weird to get onto that uh, elevator. Heading over here, we've got an area that's going to look like a dead end, because it is a dead end, but there is in fact, if you check the map, a secret to be found here. It's not a collectible though. Uh, you may notice that carousel in the background, and hey, there's a golden horse right there. Well, if we stand in front of the golden horse and hold the X button, bang, secret area. Every major area in the game has one secret room like this that often has a not so obvious entrance to it that isn't marked with an interact button. If you stand in front of the area where it's located and hold the X button, you will go on in. And we get these golden bricks. These golden bricks allow us to unlock uh, special assists. Uh, in this case, we unlocked Alex from the original River City Ransom, which is, of course, Alex is just uh, Kunio's uh, English, uh, I don't want to say dub, but English translated name for the NES River City Ransom. We'll uh, check him out later. We're already on the way to uh, getting to uh, Uptown. So we'll just leave that on the back burner for right now. But as the text uh, showed us, and as we saw on the map, he's just hanging out on the bridge area. We'll be heading back that way when we want to uh, return and go to downtown. Whoops, didn't realize that there was a walk off there. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of just lost in my rambles here. But yeah, we'll uh, check that out when we actually return and take the bridge to get to downtown. There are a couple ways to get to downtown, but that's the fastest way. It also gets us closer to the main quest that we need to take on there, so that's the way I like to take when it comes time to go there. Much like the previous game, though, to get to Uptown, we can just head through the mall and just cut straight through. I already bought all the uh, agility-boosting food at the uh, tea shop, so Kunio is moving reasonably fast for right now. Heading into here, got a whole bunch of cops waiting for us, but we can just go on by. to Uptown again. Great. And no, we can't go shopping. Fine. You think that Ken guy was lying about Yakuza taking over the entire city? Not sure. Let's go beat up some bad guys and find out. Alright, so now that we're actually in a new area and uh, I feel like doing some fighting, let's go over a few of uh, Kunio's uh, quirks as a character. Because uh, he is actually one of the more, despite being the standard protagonist character, he is actually one of the more gimmicky characters in the game. Kunio's special gimmick revolves around his special attacks. He can hold his special attacks, almost all of his special attacks, actually I think all of them, and charge them up to get stronger versions of them. So he can do that for this uh, standard grounding one, get a very powerful knee that lunges forward. In the air he has a hurricane kick that actually also serves as some jumping ability, but if you hold the button, he'll do a head slam and you'd feel like that would hurt him more than it actually does, but nah, he, he takes that like a champ. And like I said, all of Kunio's special moves uh, have this sort of revving property to them, where you can rev them up to get a uh, different or stronger attack. So if we do a standard combo string there off of the finisher, we can hold the special attack button for just a little bit, get a stronger knee, send those guys flying. Kunio has pretty good crowd control ability like that, and uh, it's definitely pretty cool that his uh, hurricane kick functions as a sort of uh, double jump. In fact, you can actually use it repeatedly in the air. Let's uh, show that off. Oh, went wrong. <laughs> I used the, the Borger move there. We just want to hit this girl into the air and show off that you can mash out that button and do it multiple times. And in fact, I think you can do this one endlessly as long as you have special meter. Ow. And that is actually very handy for getting a few secret areas in the game. Uh, Kunio has basically... Uh, unlimited aerial mobility, so long as his uh, special meter holds, of course. So that gives him uh, some help by uh, reaching some hard-to-reach places that are required for secrets in this game. Here we got Hiroshi, but we can't interact with him at the moment. That'll come later. Uh, this way up here just leads to a dead end. There's a video game store here, but all of the items there are way too expensive, so I don't feel like uh, checking that out right now. They do give two stat point boosts. Here we got a bookstore. And this is our new hideout. So we can come back here, uh, get some assists. In fact, I want to pick up that one guy that we got at the end of the previous video. So he's towards the bottom of the list. So let's just head up at the start. And Li Chang, he's got a very good assist. So we'll take him over the cheerleader since I don't, I'm not a fan of their jump kick assist. So uh, 
I'm just doing something for the sake of getting an achievement uh, right here. I believe I've used... Yes, yes. Uh, you can't see it because my Steam overlay isn't picked up by OBS, but if you switch between uh, Kunio and Misako or Ricky and Kyoko in the bookstore, you get an achievement for that <clears throat> called Romance Novel. There's not that much romance in this game, though, because uh, the plot is just exclusively about uh, Kyoko and Misaka for the most part. One more area to check out off the side here, Feline Good. And inside here, oh hey, it's Mihoko. Let's talk to her. Hey! I know that voice. We're leaving. Stop. Be nice. Nope. I am not putting up with one more single minute of... Mihoko! It's so good to see you. Likewise! What brings you two out here? You know, beating people up, taking back our usual hangout spots from the Yakuza, same as usual. Totally! Where's your little dog? Oh, Molly McMuffins? She was being naughty, so we had to... get rid of her. As in, like, get rid of her? What? Oh no, of course not! I gave Molly to my sister. That's part of a broader life change. I'm into cats now! That's why I'm here at this cat cafe! This is hell. The only problem is, the cats all escaped! Will you two help me round them up? Spoke too soon. This is hell. Now we're in it. We can help you out. What do these missing cats look like? There's 20 of them, each with the sweetest, cutest, rudest, widow, squatchy face. We got it. 20 missing cats. On it. Good luck! And here is the side quest that is the closest in execution to the Sabu statues from the first game, Finding the Missing Cats from the Feline Good Cat Shelter. Also, you gotta love how uh, Mihoko clearly still has her dog in the sprite there. They just hit it behind the counter. But that's neither here nor there. Gotta make good use of those assets somehow. But yes, you collect cats throughout this game, and they come back to the shelter and be adorable inside the various toys or, uh little uh, cat homes around the area. And this is, again, much like uh, the selfie side quest, another game-long side quest. Let's just check out this store here. I believe this guy... Yeah, this guy sells some special items. Uh, we do want this attack power boost, so we'll take this cat pillow and we will eat it. Yeah, in the first game, uh, any kind of consumable you was just described as used, but in this game you explicitly just eat them. <laughs> so uh, we could eat in a to toy alarm, but that's kind of expensive for one uh, point of stamina. And of course, we've got the noise figure once again. Gives a boost to every single stat, but at a whopping 500. We will, it will be a while before we have the money for that, or at the very least the disposable income for that. I could easily just beat up a bunch of guys to get that, but I'd rather not do that. Uh, it's not super worth it for uh, the one point stat boost. I'd probably get all those stat boosts uh, or all those stat points along the way just by getting level ups from grinding the money. Heading into here, uh, unfortunately Skullmageddon is no longer in the pawn shop, but the dog is still manning the store and is selling some stuff for us. Got another attack point boost here, could always use more of that. Dango is a much more reasonable price to pay for uh, one stat point boost. Here is a very unique uh, consumable item, the uh, Doriaki which gives you plus three luck, a stat I don't care about, but that is one of the biggest hot stat boosts you can get out of a food item. In fact, it's hat, like just in terms of raw points gained, it's half uh, the effect of the noise figure for uh, more than, like less than a fifth of the cost. Now, there is another secret area in here. See this vent? Hold X in front of it. And we hit the next secret room. Unfortunately, we do not get an assist for this gold brick collected, but we will get another assist for the next one we collect. Yeah, you don't get an assist for every gold brick you get. I believe it's, uh, I want to say it's, uh, it's definitely three when you get the next one. I forget if it's four or five when you get the fifth one. And then after the, not the fifth one, uh, four or five after you get the third assist. And then I think uh, there's no more after that until you collect all the golden bricks. Alright, heading further through Uptown. Not too difficult to get through here, since we don't have to worry too much about getting uh, held up with lock screens. There's a few accessory stores on this street here, but I don't care about those. This way just leads to a dead end, but yeah, what the heck, let's just check it out just to see what is waiting for us here. Huh, some kind of a Bobo lookalike is here. We can't really do anything with him though, but as you can see, past this gated off area, there's another kitty. We can't do anything with them yet at the moment, so we're just going to have to come back for that later. 
Where we actually want to go is up here. And I'm going to be honest with you, Uptown is my least favorite area in the game uh, because it is just very boring to explore. Uh, well, you don't even really explore it. Uptown is a straight line with a single uh, bus route in the center of it. And uh, this place is just really tedious to get go through. And the quests we're assigned to do here involve a lot of backtracking through it. Enter, here we've got Soup and Sticks with Tengu, who, from what I've read, is another Technos game character, although I forget offhand which game he's from. We're going to buy another attack point and get some uh, SP as well. There we go. Like I said, for the sake of this LP, until I have some disposable income, I'm just going to ignore anything that uh, boosts uh, weapon power and uh, luck, because those stats just aren't that good. Hey, who is this? Look, it's Kozuki. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Be nice. Hey, Kozuki. Oh, hey! What are you two doing out here? Beating up Yakuza, safe in the city, same old. You? Funny, you should mention that. I'm chasing down info on the sudden influx of criminal activity in River City for an RCH exclusive story! Nobody knows where all these criminals are coming from, but they're driving at all the old school store owners. I'll get to the bottom of it, though. I always do. This story is gonna be hot! I'll bet. No one reads the school paper, Kosuke. Sorry, someone skipped breakfast this morning. Oh, no worries. I followed my leads from RC High to here. I've got a feeling this leads back to San Wakai Tower, but I haven't been able to get inside yet. Some Oni-looking goons are blocking the entrance. Strange. Did you show them your RCH press pass? Uh, yeah I did. And they told me to beat it! Can you imagine? I can. You two have a way of getting around. Maybe you can help me get inside the tower so I can get my exclusive? Maybe later. We need to get going. Nice talking to you. Good luck with your story. And man, Kozuki is awfully buff for someone who's just a reporter. When she said Oni looking guard, she meant it. The, the guy is just an Oni. So you got some, uh... Areas you can climb up here to get on the scaffolding, but there isn't really anything up here. I'm not really sure why they designed the area like this. Strange, very strange. Anyways, what we actually came here for is this guy. Oh, hey, Abu Boo. You dressing up for Halloween or something? A doo doo smash. What? Don't compare me with that loser of Bobo. You're not him? Do I look like him? Well, probably in a black and white photo, yeah. Or if it's very dark. My name's me Bobo, and it's my job to keep losers out of this sweet nightclub. Why would you assume we're losers? Because you ain't in here. <laughs> He's got us there. Pretty airtight logic. Any chance you could let us inside? Not unless I know you've got some sweet dance moves. Of course we do. We're young and cool. Yeah, we're great at dancing. No, uh I ain't falling for that again. You gotta prove it. How? Go get a top five score on that dance game in the arcade. Do that, and I'll let you inside. Can our friend Hiroshi get the high score? Yeah, we heard he's pretty good at that game. Not unless you're trying to get him inside this club. Fine, we get it. We'll be back. And we get our first part of the quest, and the first part of the reason why I really hate this area. We gotta walk all the way back to the arcade area and talk to Hiroshi, and, you know, play that arcade game. How much you want to guess there's gonna be more uh, work involved? Well, I'll meet you there. All right, here we are back at the arcade screen. Let's talk to Hiroshi. The arcade! Finally, we can get some game time. Oh, yeah. About that. Hey, Hiroshi. Are you here to play video games, too? Well, I was before these Yakuza goons took the place over. This is getting annoying. Yep. I was planning to set the top five scores again in Ultra Dance You Light Up My Life Baby Remix VXX, but they changed all the games, so now they only accept Y coins. Y coins? Yakuza coins. We don't have any of those. Nobody does, except the Yakuza. That's unfair. They won't even let you inside unless you have at least 15 Y coins. Any idea where we can get some? Well, they changed all the coin machines, too. Look around Uptown. You're bound to find some. Thanks, Hiroshi. 
So yeah, as soon as we get to the arcade, we have to embark on another side quest. This time to get some Y coins. We gotta find the token dispensers around town and smash them. Luckily, uh, the first two are relatively close to the arcade, so heading out this way, if we head on to the next screen here, we will find our dispenser right at the entrance. It's one of those Yakuza coin machines. Punch it in its face! But machines don't have faces. Uh, you know what I mean. Alright, so with wor working with your assists, you can smash these things pretty quickly. I kind of lost track of my character there, which is why uh, I just had Kunio walking towards the bottom. But uh, Lee Chen is very helpful for smashing these machines really quickly. As you're trying to break them, enemies will just keep harassing you. Uh, we just need to break it down and get five coins out of it. That's five Y coins. Not a bad start. Alright. So, that is our first machine. Next one is in the stairwell leading to the pawn shop. I'm just gonna leave that lady to her fate. Heading on to the next one here. Another machine. Let's crack it open! So, in this area, there's a chance that zombies will spawn. I have kind of been ignoring zombies here, uh, but zombies, uh, unlike the first game where they're just were basically just joke enemies. They didn't give us, they didn't even give experience. They all died in one punch, and they almost never attack you. In this game, they're a bit more of a serious enemy. They're immune to, uh, mo or they're pretty heavily resistant to knockback, and uh, they actually do have an attack that they throw out pretty frequently. This uh, machine's not too difficult to break though, because it's just usually that zombie and one enemy. Another five coins. These are good anywhere else. Stay focused. Right. Alright, so our next Y-Coin machine is actually on the same screen as me, Bobo, so we have to walk all the way to the end of Uptown again. Hey, level up. I'll meet you there. And here we are again. Every time I replay this game and do this side quest, or, well, not side quest, main quest, I'm like, why did they not put another bus stop in this section of Uptown? It would have made this area... Take it down. As I was saying, it would made this area a lot less irritating. <laughs> I really am not a fan of how they decided to handle this area. It's definitely the worst uh, the backtracking ever is in this game. At the very least, in other sections where there's a lot of backtracking, uh, there's at least uh, enemy encounters and lock screens along the way to uh, spice things up and some interesting challenges. But this is just the most gratuitous the game ever gets with the backtracking. It's like Chapter 4, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. Five more coins makes 20. You mean 15. 15 makes 20? Math isn't your strongest subject, is it? Who really pays attention in school? Yeesh, Ricky. <laughs> they really make him out to be a himbo when he's reading Kyoko's script. That is actually a completely unique line uh, for Ricky to say there at the end. Uh, uh, I think Kyoko's is something along the line of, to be honest, none of them are. Anyways, now we have to walk all the way back to the arcade. And man, I hate it when I'm just running forward and I get decked in the face. Alright, back to the arcade. All right, let's see if Hiroshi's got anything more for us to say to us. Nope, he's just already gone in. Heading into the arcade. There's that dancing machine. I still think we should get Hiroshi to beat it for us. Don't be such a cheater. Yeah, come on, Kunio. Where, where's your sportsman spirit? Anyways, heading into this, we actually do get a mini game, a rhythm game, so to speak. Although it's not really that much of a rhythm game, not a difficult one anyway. <laughs> So, heading into here, we get a very, very, very rudimentary rhythm game. It's just one where uh, stuff is coming along on a horizontal line, and we just have to press it as it overlaps with the circle there. And the timing is stupidly generous, and you don't, like, get any points for uh, getting perfect timing or anything. You just have to finish the minigame. They made it very simple, so just in case you're bad at these, uh, you can get through it. No problem, no problem. And... Probably the biggest sin for a rhythm game is that the music is not that good, honestly, so I have no problem just yammering over this. It's very straightforward. Uh, if you uh, happen to flub commands, you, you take hits uh, and uh, you lose some of your health there, but you also get health back for uh, successfully hitting things with the timing, so it is very, very straightforward. I can't imagine you having any difficulty with this. Uh, I didn't even hit the right button there and it just gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, this is not hard at all. 
This uh, last section, though, is a lot longer. I didn't I did notice, that, like, as I'm just talking about it, I, I do kind of flub the commands every now and again. Man, who knew it would be this easy to get the highest score in a rhythm game? Oh, there we go. It's kind of just uh, not doing so great there. Beesh. How much longer? You know what this reminds me most of is actually uh, the dancing minigame in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, like when you steal the uh, the uh, stereo van. There we go. It's also the same uh, thing they used for the uh, hydraulics minigame with the lowriders. We did it! Even easier than real dancing. Quick, take a photo so we can show that green bodyguard dude and get inside the club. I'll say, Ricky, dancing ain't easy. Anyways, now that that's taken care of, once again, we have to walk all the way back to me Bobo. Ugh, meet you there. Alright, here we are once again on me Bobo's screen. I would say this is the last time we have to backtrack in this area, but we do actually have to head back to that bus stop to get out of here, so unfortunately there's still gonna be a little bit more. Me Bobo, please, let us through. We're back. And this time, we actually beat the game, see? Not bad. Guess you two got some moves after all. I don't see how a dancing video game translates into being able to dance in a club, though. Sure it does. And we can't wait to show off our moves inside the club now. I'm starting to reconsider my offer. Don't! We'll just go inside now. Thanks again. Ha, uh, Ricky, you almost ruined it for us there. But I think that is where we'll end this video. Sadly, did not get to do very much combat as Kunio, but this is, a, this is a longer game than the first game, so there will be plenty more opportunities for him to show off. Next time, we'll be uh, tagging in Ricky and see how he handles. Uh, I should be able to get a decent number of moves for him. He'll have more money to work with since we completed a couple more quests in this area, or at least one more quest. And that is where we will leave off. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the next video where we find out what the heck is in this nightclub. Until then, though, goodbye.